It's an interesting question at the moment in terms of whether it's good or bad news for both 16 to 18 and 19 plus. Um, it will differ very much by, uh, on college to college basis. Um, 16 to 18 primarily obviously it's about are the learners there and there's a question mark in terms of moving forward whether colleges are seeing the sort of increase in participation that they've been expecting. But for many colleges they will and the funding will come certainly as the uh, raising the participation age kicks in. Having said that, the rate per learner is going down to be able to pay for it. So in most cases I think we'll find that they will have to do more uh, but for less funding. So the question is around efficiencies uh, on 16 to 18. On 19 plus funding um, quite a different picture is emerging. I think most people had better allocations than they expected. I think some money that had been set aside um, wasn't needed and has been reallocated. But the big question is whether colleges can deliver what the government wants them to deliver, and that's more apprenticeships and it's more uh, provision to those that are unemployed to help them get into work. So if colleges aren't doing those things, they could quickly experience problems. It's very clear that apprenticeships are uh, not the only show in town in terms of the workplace, but certainly the key one, um, massive, you could argue, um, growth targets there. Clearly employers play a very big part. If the apprentice needs to be employed, then uh, we need the employers on board. But yeah, apprenticeships is, is, is a very big growth area. Um, colleges really need to be involved in that. Uh, I would argue preferably being the prime contractor if they can, uh, so they don't have to rely on others to do the work for them. Um, so really need to be, uh, uh, as they ha many colleges have been, uh, building on their relationships with employers uh, and delivering increasing numbers of uh, apprentices, both 16 to 18 in particular, but also 19 to 24, which is a key priority, and, uh, and where, you know, where appropriate um, for those aged 25 and older. It's very clear that it will be an expectation of more for less in the context of, um, if not the same, certainly more provision, but for less funding per learner, if you will, or, or per uh, qualification. Um, so strategies are around efficiencies, which don't have an impact on demand, because that needs to continue to be the same, or pr probably more if, as I said, rates are going down. So what can they do to save money without impacting on, uh, on the quality and the demand of the provision? So class size, very clearly, if you can amalgamate two groups of 10 into one group of 20 and save uh, teaching costs that way, for example, it's a classic. And class size is an issue for the FE sector. Um, you know, clearly we don't want to have an impact on quality by having too big a classes, but I think that a lot still can be done to, uh, to make savings in that way. There are lots of other things that can be done um, around teaching time as well and, and others, but I think the f initial focus always and the way to ensure that um, you are really getting uh, maximum efficiencies um, at the moment is to ensure that you've got enough uh, young people and adults in, in the classroom or in the workplace to uh, justify the funding. I think pe too many pe people talk about optimization and they try and work out ways of, of, uh, of, of using you know, which qualification, etc. And that, you know, what, what are the rates and, and maybe get distracted from what the learners actually need. Um, and uh, it's very easy to do that and, to, and in that sense kind of play the system, which is, I think is, ends up being actually quite uh, counterproductive. Uh, the learners get things necessarily that aren't right for them. Ofsted think that you're delivering the wrong programs. So I think the thing to avoid is, is to try and um, find shortcuts through uh, particular qualifications that have you know, good rates or to, uh, to, to, to manipulate data, which is still uh, an attractive option, but really is, again, counterintuitive. So the critical thing is to focus on, on, on the big things like class size um, and not get distracted by, um, by you know, thinking that uh, um, by manipulating data, even legitimately, but in ways that aren't necessary to benefit the learner, is in the long term actually going to be beneficial because it won't be.